we're going to say one thing and then we're going to do something. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, Mill was asking about how come, uh, if it's neutral, you speak so positively of it, you see. After which she then explained why it might be positive, but we will leave that. Um, so, uh, because, you know, can you prove that this is positive? You know, that it's going to be positive in your life? Uh, I don't think I can, you see. I, I absolutely experience it as hugely positive in a thousand ways. But can I prove it? But there is one thing, you see, uh, that uh, you can be sure of which is that you are. What you are, you can't be certain of. This might be a dream. You might be at home in bed dreaming this. Mm -hmm. But that you are is self-evident. You are, you see. And you can't prove that, but it, that's why you would say it's self-evident. Now, this fact that you are, and when you're seeing this, you see, you're seeing you are, not as the individual in the chair, primarily, but as the one. Awareness. Awareness is self-evident. Full of something. I say the basic thing is nothing is full of something. What it's full of, you can't be sure of. 100%. You act as if this is real, and you must, but you can't be 100%. But that awareness is, with something in it, self-evident, you see. Now, if you say, you sort of tell yourself a story that in the beginning was nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. And then suddenly, awareness. Full of something, right? And awareness goes, how did I do that? <laughs> right? Where did I come from? That is magic. I mean, it's not like you came from somewhere because there's nowhere else. You just are. So awareness is God, spirit, awareness, the void, what, you know, full of something, whatever you want to say. <coughs> That's amazing. I am. That is positive. There's no downside to that as far as I can see. It's just what they say call the joy without a shadow. Every joy in life has a shadow because it ends or it goes wrong or, you know, every joy has a shadow. But this is the joy that has no shadow. You are, you see. And that's the basic thing that I'm on about here. Is this wonderful joy without a shadow. You see. Which is not dependent on what happened. You see, because what happens, happens in it. Now, uh, if you... We like stories, you know. Netflix. <laughs> stories. We, we love stories. There's something very old and deep and right and true about stories but isn't you know defining something it's telling a story but it means something you see what is going on in awareness is a story the one loves a story here it is you see how do you know the one loves it it's here shall I say it now now in the story you see in the beginning there's nothing and then suddenly I am I don't know how I do it. I don't know it, it, right now. I don't know how I create myself out of nothing. You see, it, it, it takes no effort, no preparation, you know, no training to come into being. You see, it, it's magic. You can't explain it. That's the joy without a shadow. You see, it, it's just fantastic. And this is a, you know, we're all trying to find joy and. Uh, and, you know, we chase it. You know, the American Constitution is the right to pursue happiness or something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we do that all the time. That's life. That's great. That's the story. See. Here, you can be aware of the joy that you don't have to pursue, that is given in its entirety, freely, Without effort, you are. And really, uh, seeing who you are is, is a, a, acknowledging that. You see, and not just going by the things that come and go, the joys that turn into sorrow all the time. 
You see, that's, that's the nature of life. But here is this basic joy. Now live from that. Admit it. Admit it. Acknowledge it. Celebrate it. You see. Now, if you have something that happens to you, you win the lottery, you want to share that. I mean, you want to tell someone. You see, or you, you know, you've got a new job, or even if something goes wrong, you want to tell someone, you want to share it. It is absolutely built into us to share. I'm in you and you're in me, you see. So we want to share. It's built in. Now, in the story, you are the one, self-evidently, that's what the workshop is about, is look and see who you are. You're the one. And you are. So there is, at the centre of your life, this joy without a shame. <coughs> It's joy without a shadow. You can't get away from it. it it's glorious. It, it's so glorious. It's that you are. That's what I'm talking about. So it's natural when you discover something so brilliant, you want to share it, right? But the nature of being the one is there's no others. <coughs> so, somehow, magically, you create within the one this story of others. Which is what we're talking about this morning, right? I can't prove there are others here. But with every fibre of my being, I act as if it's true, right? That's this amazing story. Because now in this workshop, you're aware there's only one, this joy without a shadow. But aren't we sharing that? See, isn't, the one share, isn't the one talking to itself through the many about being the one? It's celebrated. You know, mm -hmm. I'm the one. I'm the joy without the shadow. Are you? Yes. yes. <laughs> you see. Now, when you share something with someone, uh, if they have no experience of that, you know, I don't know, you've been skiing. I've never been skiing. Uh, uh, and uh, they say, oh, it's fantastic to ski downhill, you see. You just feel so free. And you, and you sort of nod. But they know that you don't really know what they're talking about. And then someone comes along who loves, has skied and loves skiing. And they say, it's, and they say yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You hardly have to say anything else, because they know, because they've experienced it. Now, the one is the joy without a shadow. And it, you are. You are. This is just fantastic. Now, wouldn't you want to share it? You see? Yeah. Now, wouldn't you want to share it with someone who knows what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you the one? Yes. yes. You see? Are you the one? Yeah. Yes. Now the one is sharing with itself as if it's sharing with another. Deeply, you see. Because this journey, you deeply... Take on board the reality of others and yourself, right? It's deep. In the, it's, it's deeper than thinking. You can't unthink it. It's in your bones. You know, the, uh, uh, a bus comes down the road, you jump out of the way. You know, it's instinctively in you. Deeply in you. You see, this, this sense of separation and others. But that is what it's all about. This story. Underneath it all. It is this wonderful, deeply true, if you like, almost true, 99.9, .9, experience of self and others within the one. Because to see that you're this headless open space, you don't have to get rid of the idea of others, do you? It doesn't, it doesn't stop you seeing this space. But when you see that, uh, how valuable that sense of others is, See, I got into all kinds of difficulties uh, years ago because I thought being the one was meant that you uh, no longer had a feeling of separation. You no longer felt looked at. You no longer felt criticised, you see. And, then, and, uh, and I, I uh, thought that this is what being the one was, you see. You know? Endless peace, and never having any more problems, and never feeling under inspection or separate, you see. And I couldn't do it. And uh, it, it, I got into all kinds of problems with it, you see. Until I had to face the fact I couldn't do it. I, you know, 
I wanted to do it, but I couldn't get rid of this sense of others. That in those, behind those faces is a consciousness I can't see. You see, and this consciousness is behind a face. I just couldn't get rid of that idea. So when I realized I couldn't get rid of it, I thought, maybe it's actually meant to be. You see, maybe the sense of others and self is meant to be. Why? Because the one wants this experience of many. I mean, it is just so inventive, isn't it? For the one who is alone to have this deep sense of others and then to go on to recognize that over there in the others is the one. How strange and mysterious and wonderful is that? It's, you, can't, it's not, you can't explain it neatly, you know, but it's a story. You tell a story to celebrate it. Mm. So this is where, you see, we're, we had to tell the story, but now we go on into even better, you know, season four. <laughs> 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 Don't stop at season three, you see, because you, you think you know who the murderer is. <laughs> You think you know, but uh, you know they've left you on a cliffhanger. <laughs> now we've gone on in you know season four. Oh gosh, I never saw that. I completely missed that one. I thought I was a character in the story. I thought that was it, and suddenly I realised I'm the story. I am the one holding it. I came up with it. I'm the author. Wow, I'm glad I continued. I'm glad I didn't stop my subscription. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was lucky. <laughs> and it constantly to be continued. Yeah, to be continued. All the time. <laughs> yes, that's yes. right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Previously. <laughs> yes. And, and always to be continued because it's fresh. It's like just being. It, it, it's fresh now, isn't it? Mm. You, you know. It, I mean, can you be sure it was here two seconds ago? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you might believe it is, and it will. It, it's had a time. It, it, it suddenly, what seemed to be a kind of, um, you know, the end of the story is the gateway into a completely new story. Yeah. And it's good news, it's to be continued now. Yeah. You don't, have to, you don't have to wait for the next week. That's right. It's yeah. now. Yes. It's yeah. great. I'm sorry, I can't yeah. talk to you. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> you are the production. Yeah. It's, uh... No, no. The funny thing is you can do fast forward. What? Uh -huh. You can do fast forward uh -huh. and backwards. So it's Never. Uh, okay, I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> I'll let you embody that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you see then, you see how, you know, in evolution, you never give anything up. Uh, you know, the, the old brain is still there when you develop the front brain, right? The, new, the reptilian brain. You, 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 when you evolve uh, your brain, over millions of years, you still need the, the, the ancient brain that's working, you see. And as you evolve into this, you still need all these, you see. You don't get rid of these. Uh, but they come <coughs> and play a new part. So in the child, you're making things up as you go along, right? Because <laughs> you're not in a box yet, so you haven't learned the rules that you can't do that. Now when you move to this, you, you start to uh, uh, connect with uh, those ancient ways in yourself and in humanity. So you realise, actually, it's actually true that this moment is coming moment by moment out of nowhere, you see. I, I, and it's coming at me and I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> now, you embrace that, right? You don't resist it so much, you embrace it. Just as this sense of self and others that 
I, when I got, you know, into uh, a mess, I was resisting this, uh, this feeling of being looked at, right? And that somehow I had to get rid of it. So basically I was resisting it. And when I saw that I couldn't get rid of it, and in fact it was a really beneficial thing, because it meant I could share this sense of being with others, I began to say yes to it, rather than, you know, this is painful, difficult, I don't want this to... Okay, it's still painful, difficult, but it's what I want. Mm. Right? So I begin to say yes to it. And the thing that you say yes to is very different from the same thing when you say no to it. Mm -hmm. This is uh, where suffering comes from, you see. So, uh, okay, well, uh, so <coughs> now my journey is more and more to say yes. Say yes to this feeling of separation. Yes to me and you. Yes to not knowing what's going to happen. Yes to not being in control. Right? Yes. 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 <laughs> this uh, life said yes to from here is different from life said no to. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, uh, this is a kind of, when you see that the basic being is the joy without a shadow, it is 150% positive. You see? That, ver that very basic experience of being, which is self-evident, and is the one thing you can be 100% sure of. Not what it is, but that it is. Not what you are, but that you are. Mm. When you say that, you, when you recognize that, you're, this is a big, deep Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a big, deep, positive thing. Whatever happens. Whatever happens. <coughs> and you say, yeah, but, uh, you know, I, my life is such a mess and I've got such problems and, uh, you know, it doesn't seem to help those problems and maybe I'll, you know, come round and say yes to it when I've sorted these problems out, you know. <laughs> it, you, it, it's the humility of saying, I am even though my life is in a mess, at the base here, you know, or seems to be in a mess. Because who knows, mm -hmm. right? Who knows? It's not so uh, cut and dried. Yes. Richard, but also when I say, when I say you know, or when I resist, it's yeah. also in the same space. Yes. So for me it's really a paradox. Yes. It, you know, it's like I, I asked yesterday about passive and active. Yes. So if I want to say yes, but I resist, yeah. there is a paradox here. Yeah. Uh, how do we like complete it? Yes to you the say yes, yes to the no. Yes to the no. <laughs> this is what I thought. Yes, yes, that's right. Because you see, you could say <laughs> that this says yes to everything, right? Right. So your your true no, this says no yes to some things and no to others, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Right? But this is yes to everything. It just does not refuse anything. So your basic being says yes to all your no's and respects them. Right? You don't have to get rid of them. You're going to have lots of resistances. I do, all the time. You know? Uh, things are always, you know, getting in my way and, you know, uh, things going wrong and, you know. It, it, it. But, so I do what I can. I see that uh, the, the, the re a deep remedy is to be conscious. Yeah? You see, and then, you see, that makes a huge difference if you have this basic awareness, doesn't it? Because you're either aware of this or you're suppressing it and you're thinking you're this. You, you, it's not a little bit of this. You know, it's either on or off. I mean, fortunately, it's always there. You know? Yeah. So, but this, as you see, is where life begins. It doesn't end. It, it, you, uh, here is this adventure going on within the one. And it's all up for grabs. And it's all, all uh, unknown, really, isn't it? Yes. And it's a learning experience. So we're going to do one or two things before lunch. We've got about half an hour. And uh, I would like... 
Uh, let's take these back and then just clear a space. So we've got, uh, move the chairs back. Uh, no head circle, so some of the equal numbers. So stand around in a circle. Put your arms around each other like yesterday. That's right, yeah. And let this lady in. Yeah. And look down. Look down at your own body and notice how your body, um, unique, individual, you identify with it, but it comes out of this headless space at the top, and you're seeing this. It's not primarily thinking it. Thinking comes out of it and it is about it that you are non-verbally seeing your body vanishes above your waist into this boundless open consciousness, the one <clears throat> you are. Now look at the middle of the floor and you'll see the circle of bodies and you'll see that all the bodies disappear about waist or chest level into the same space at the top you, that your body disappears into. So you could say all the bodies are coming out of this one consciousness. Or you could say all the bodies are coming out of you. You could say down there we're many, at the top we're one. All right, so relax your arms. And just turn so you can see me. Oh, do you want to join in? Yeah. So I'm going to explain that another thing that we can do with this and uh, this is about the many and the one. So what you will be doing in a moment will be to turn around so you're facing out. And you'll have to probably move back a bit, but just so that you're more or less shoulder. You know. sure. But let me explain first so you can see me before <laughs> you turn around. All right? Uh, so you'll be looking out from the circle. And what I'll ask you to do is open your arms to embrace your view out. Now, your arms will naturally overlap or underlap with the people either side. Let that happen. That's the point. I will go through this first of all quickly, and then I'll let you put your arms down and we'll go through it slow, because otherwise your arms will get tired, right? Okay? So, if you are here, just don't look directly at the people, you know, don't bother about the people in the other circle. All right? So, in the circle, but facing outwards... Right. Now hold out your arms in a V that ex embraces your view out. So uh, you see that between your hands is your view. So embrace your view. So there, there you are. Between your hands is your view, no one else's. Only you experience this. But notice your, view, your arms overlap with others either side, which indicates that they see your view overlaps with theirs. You see the same picture. Okay, you don't experience that, you, you hear about it. Now you see your arms come out of the void. You don't see your head, they come out of this one consciousness. And you'll see either side, the arms poke out of the same consciousness. Alright, put your arms down. So we'll go through this slowly. So you're just looking out, and you see the single eye, your view out of the room. And only you are experiencing this. Now, this not only includes what you can see, but what you can hear, and what you can feel, and think, and so on. Only you are experiencing this. Now you'll be aware, when others, people talk to you, that they can see the same room, uh, the same country, they might share the same views of you, they hear the same sound. You don't actually experience their view out, you hear about it. But it overlaps with yours, which is where, which means we can communicate. Now you remember that your arms, you came out of nothing, you're looking out of this clear open space. Now when you talk to others, you will hear them say that they're looking out of the same space too. They're looking out of a space with no boundaries, no name them on it. That's when we look down, you see all the legs come out of the same one space. 
So uh, this is an image for the many and the one. That your view is called the sun of my soul, S-U-N. The sun has many rays coming out. Your view out is one of the rays coming from the sun. There are many views out. You only experience your view out when you hear about the others. And you can talk to them and they can say what they see. Now you can see you're looking out of the sun. You are the sun, this one consciousness. And you recognize that the other views out are from this same consciousness. It's a mystery. The one and the many. One consciousness, many views out. You experience one of the views directly, one of the lives, you hear about the others. So everyone here you can recognize is a view from the one, is a life flowing from the one. You have direct experience of one of the lives of the one, yours. But you hear about all the others. Okay, we're going to do something else, but I just want you to sit down in your chair. Don't move it, because we're going to get back up. But just sit down, and we'll just be quiet for a couple of minutes. This is a very simple uh, movement thing. I'm going to point back at my uh, space here. And um, I'm going to turn around. And as I turn around, I'm noticing... Well, what do you think I'm noticing? The room is spinning. The room is spinning. Yes. And I'm still, right? So you're empathizing with me, do you see? Because from the outside, you can see I'm moving and the room is still. But you're putting yourself in my position and realizing that from my point of view, it's the opposite, right? Yes? Yes. One consciousness, many views out. You, this gives you access to my view in a way. Yes. So find a space in the room. Stand up. And point back, so, so you don't bump into a chair or somebody else, right? Point, and if you get dizzy, so obviously stop. Point back at your uh, place you're looking out of and begin to turn around on the spot. And notice that you're still and the room is moving. I mean, look at your finger. You can see the room moving past your finger. Okay. Did the earth move? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yes. Removed, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, do you see what we're doing? We're, we're uh, admitting in public this simple truth, right? <laughs> and the more we admit it in public, the more normal it becomes, right? Yeah, you see. It's just true. As Whereas, in Galileo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. It's, a, it's a very moving story. I, I think it's true. You know, Galileo, who said, said that, um, you know, that uh, I suppose the earth moves around the sun, you see. And the church authorities didn't like it. And they made him recant. They made him deny it. All right? Threat of death or threat to his family. <coughs> right? They made him deny it. And on his deathbed, he said, but still, yeah. but still, it moves. Mm -hmm. Right. You see. Fantastic. It's, you know, you know, you might get me to say that, but the truth is, the truth is, yeah, the truth is, you see. And this is what we're looking in 
and looking into it, you think, oh, well, you might all tell me I move, but what can I say? I don't. You know, it's not an opinion. It's an observation. And that eventually the church had to admit, you know, and eventually society had to say, it doesn't agree with our views, but it's true. So we, you know, and this is this, you see. This does not agree with social view at the moment, but what are we going to do? Deny it? No. You see. Society will come round to it. 